Hello again, it's Thursday afternoon here at DX Engineering and that means it's time for another Digital Dorsey. My name is Ken Dorsey, my call sign is Kilo Alpha 8, Oscar Alpha Delta. And last week's show I demonstrated how you can use a new device that DX Engineering is selling, a little board made by a company called Radio Analog, to actually add a pan adapter to your IC7300. So we did that last week. If you want to see it working, uh, please watch that episode. I demoed how, uh, how it works in that episode. This week, we're going to actually show you how easy it is to install this board. It's a very easy board to install. There's really no uh, um, anything re required as far as just other than a screwdriver. That's, that's really the only piece of uh, mechanical equipment you're going to need is just a, a screwdriver to open the case. So uh, no other tools required on this one. Uh, the board comes in a little box like this. I will open the box real quick. Just give you a little idea of what's in here. So in the bag, you're going to have a couple of cables. This is going to be the cable that's going to go to your SDR receiver. You're going to have another small jumper cable. That's going to jumper to the radio inside where we pull off one of the cables in the radio. You're going to have a jumper for power for the board. And then you're also going to have the board itself. So that's what the board looks like and we're going to show you how to install it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to take the top case off the radio. That's 14 screws, Phillips head screws, and I'm going to go ahead and do that and we're going to speed it up so you don't have to watch me uh, take 14 screws out of this radio. Okay, so we have all the screws removed from the radio. I just put them in this little dish that I found in our uh, um, cafeteria area just to keep the screws handy and so I don't lose any of them. We've got 14 screws out. One thing I failed to mention, of course, I do have the radio unplugged and the radio is turned off, obviously. So no power going to the radio. So at this point, we're ready to open the case. Now I'm gonna take a, a wrist strap, a grounded wrist strap here. It's always a good idea to use something like this when you're in these radios because there are, you know, ICs that are static sensitive in these radios. If you don't have a grounded wrist strap, at least ground yourself well before breaking into the radio here. So we're going to take the case off. And there's the insides, basically. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, now the uh, radio analog guys do give you very good documentation on exactly how to install this board on the radio. Uh, they give you pictorials, uh, so you get very good pictures of exactly what is uh, unplugged and plugged and, and all that. So a very good documentation. Uh, they do offer you two options. You can either use the filters in the 7300 or you can d bypass the filters in the 7300. Now the SDR that I'm using doesn't have very good filtering, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep the filters uh, in the uh, 7300 working for me on the SDR. So I'll be using the filters in the 7300. If you want to uh, use the filters, you need to take this cable here and that, that will be removed and I'll show you that shortly and that will still give you the filters then in the, uh, in the radio. If you want to bypass the filters, there's another cable. It's the cable just down here, the one on the bottom, the one closest to this ribbon cable. That cable would have to be removed and you would use that connection instead then for, uh, 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 to bypass the filters in the radio. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, the modification. The first thing you want to do is you want to remove the uh, tuner, the tuner uh, connector. It just kind of slides out of the case and very gently just pull it from the board. It just has a little four pin connector that plugs onto the board for the tuner port. Set that aside because we will be putting that back in later. Now for the, uh, for the module, they have a little four pin cable that has the same connectors that are on the tuner connector. So we're going to, first of all, it'll make it easier if you put the cable on the board before putting the board in the radio. So we're gonna go ahead and cable that up. Sl uh, just slide the connector onto the connector on the, uh, on the card here. And those connectors are keyed, so you really can't get the connector in wrong. Well, I suppose you could if you really put a lot of force into it, but don't do that. It should slide in very easily and just kind of click in place. 
So there's the connector. That is what is going to give us our power for our board, and that's going to be pulled off the uh, tuner port. So now we're going to install the board. The board slim simply slides into the slot on the radio that the tuner connector came out of, and you just kind of work this cable around here a little bit, get it down in the radio, and then you're going to plug this other end back into that port that we just that jack that we just pulled the tuner connector out of. So we'll just get that straightened up here. And a little push goes right in. Again, you shouldn't have to use much force to get that connector in. Now make sure that this, uh, this filter here is not impeding on the fan. Make sure the fan is still clear. And I see here it's, we're fine. We're not, uh, we're not getting in the way of the fan. But just make sure that filter is not going to uh, you know, stop your, your fan from running. Okay, so the board is installed. Now we only have to make two connections really to finish the, uh, the job. So again, I said I'm going to use the filters in the radio, so I'm going to use this connection here. It's just a simple plug. Just give it a little tug and it'll pull right out. That is going to go into the board on the same connection type as you just pulled it out of. You just have to get the center pin in just right. This takes a little bit of doing. It's hard to see. I'm going to turn this around so I can see what I'm doing here. And there we go. It slid in. So again, it uh, has to be a little bit of force to get it in, but it shouldn't take too much force to put it in. Just remember that uh, center pin. Make sure you get that center pin centered in the center there so it doesn't, you don't end up bending that center pin. Now, they give you another jumper that you're going to use then to plug into the port, the jack that th that connector came off of, and then there's an MCX connector that's going to plug onto the board. So uh, let's, let's do the connection to the radio first. So again, we're going to just plug this in. We're going to make sure the center pin is pretty much centered as we put it in there. I'm going to get a little close here because the eyes aren't as good as they used to be. Just push that in like that, and you're good to go. So now we're, I'm going to make sure I got that in right. Let me try that one more time. Yep, okay, perfect. So that cable is plugged into the connection we just removed the other cable from, and now we're going to just kind of work this cable around, kind of loop it in a little bit, and we're going to plug it back into the MCX connector on the board. And it should snap in place. You should be able to hear that basically just snap in. Again, not a lot of force required for any of these connectors. Just give them a little bit of a push and they should pretty much seat very well. That's it. It's done. The board is in. The board is connected. And we're ready to put the case back on. So we'll do that now. All right, so we have the board in the radio. The radio is back on and powered up. Now the last and final thing we have to do on the back of the radio, now we have two connectors coming off where we had our tuner port. We get another cable. The company gives you this uh, SMA mail cable, total MCA ca uh, con connector. That plugs in. I'm sorry, I'm doing this standing on top of my head. That plugs into the board where the connector is for that connector, then your tuner port actually plugs back into the board. So you don't lose your tuner port. And there's your tuner port. So you have your tuner port plugged in, and you have your SMA connector plugged in for your, S, uh, your, your SDR radio. So at this point, all we need to do is take our Ethernet, or uh, excuse me, our USB cable, plug the USB cable into the back of the radio. Make sure that you have gone to the, uh, the ICOM website and downloaded the driver for the USB. It's very important to get the driver for the USB for the radio before you plug the radio into the computer. So we're going to plug the USB port in. And it saw the radio and configured it. Here's our SDR. 
We're going to take the antenna cable that we had on the back, we're going to plug it into our HF side of our S SDR, and we're going to plug the SDR into another USB port. And then we're going to launch HDSDR. Now HDSDR, I have OmniRig uh, also uh, installed for HDSDR. OmniRig is a, uh, an add-on that HDSDR can use to control the radio. So it does all the rig control on, off OmniRig, and then HDSDR just uses the, uh, the port. So here's HDSDR coming up. Now I don't have an antenna on this radio, so I don't, you're not going to get anything as far as uh, the radio actually, but uh, we will set up OmniRig. OmniRig is, now to configure OmniRig, you go to the options, find Om, uh, CD, uh, find uh, CAT to radio OmniRig, and there's a setup that you can run. So you run setup and you want to configure that for your 7300. There'll already be a configuration in there for the 7300. It comes up, I've already got mine configured. So you'll have a configuration for the 7300, make sure your baud rate is set correctly and your COM port is set correctly and you're good to go. We come back over to options and go down back to the CAT radio port and turn on the sync to the rig and then it'll actually start up and it will then sync the rig to the Omni to the Omni uh, sync. Except I've lost something here. There we go. Oh, there it is. Okay, it just take, took a couple seconds to sync up. So now we're, we're actually synced to the radio. So if I click on a frequency that if there was a frequency, since I don't have an antenna, there isn't, but like for 154, 500, anything you do on the, on the uh, SDR software will also affect the radio. Or if you're tuning the radio, the, the radio tuning will also tune the SDR software. There you have it, that's how to do it. That's how to install the adapter for your SDR radio to get a pan adapter working on your 7300. Thanks for watching today, and uh, if you have any questions, please contact DX Engineering at dxengineering.com or digitaldorsey at dxengineering.com. We'd love to hear from you, and we're always open for questions. Until next week, 73.